the Platform Sutra of the Sixth Patriarch. Number 6. Repentance At one time, Great Master Hui Neng, seeing that literati and commoners from all over the Quang Chao and Shao Chao areas had gathered at the monastery to hear the Dharma, ascended the Dai and announced to the assembly, Good friends, all of your coming here must have arisen out of your own identities. At all times and in every moment of thought you should purify your own minds, cultivate for yourself, practice for yourself, and see your own Dharmakaya, see the Buddha within your own mind. This is only attained through being saved by one's own self, by taking the precepts one's own self. It does not depend on coming here. Hence, in coming from afar and gathering together here, you all share in the same karmic connection. Now everyone should kneel upright, and I will first transmit for you the five dharmakaya incenses of the self-natures. Then I will bestow the formless repentances. The assembly all kneeled upright, and the master said, First is the incense of the precepts, which is to have no error, no evil, no jealousy, no greed and anger, and no injury within one's own mind. This is called the incense of the precepts. Second is the incense of meditation, which is to look on the realms and characteristics of the various types of good and evil with one's mind undisturbed. This is called the incense of meditation. Third is the incense of wisdom, which is for one's mind to be without hindrance, but always illuminating the self-nature with wisdom and never creating the various types of evil. Although one cultivates the myriad types of good, one's mind does not become attached. One is respectful of superiors and mindful of inferiors, taking pity on those poor and alone. This is called the incense of wisdom. Fourth is the incense of emancipation, which is for one's mind to be without equivocation. Not thinking of good and not thinking of evil, one is autonomous and without hindrance. This is called the incense of emancipation. Fifth is the incense of emancipated perceptual understanding, which is for one's mind to be without equivocation regarding good and evil. One must not become immersed in emptiness, protecting one's tranquility. One should study extensively and become learned in the scriptures, recognizing one's own fundamental mind and attaining the various principles of Buddhism. When the softened refulgence touches things, there is no self, no person. Just proceed to Bodhi, the true nature of which is unchanging. This is called the incense of emancipated perceptual understanding. Good friends, these incenses will influence each of you internally. Do not seek outside of yourselves. Now I will bequeath to you the formless repentances, so that you may extinguish your transgressions in the three periods of time and render pure your three types of karmic activity, that is, those of body, speech, and mind. Good friends, you should say the following in unison after me. From our past thoughts, to our present thoughts, to our future thoughts, so that in every moment of thought we are not subject to the defilement of stupidity, we disciples repent all our transgressions of stupidity and evil actions from the past. We beseech that our transgressions all be instantly eliminated, never to arise again. From our past thoughts to our present thoughts to our future thoughts, so that in every moment of thought we are not subject to the defilement of deceitfulness, we disciples repent all our transgressions of deceitfulness and evil actions from the past. We beseech that our transgressions all be instantly eliminated, never to arise again. From our past thoughts to our present thoughts to our future thoughts, so that in every moment of thought we are not subject to the defilement of jealousy, we disciples repent all our transgressions of jealousy and evil actions from the past. We beseech that our transgressions all be instantly eliminated, never to arise again. Good friends, the above are the formless repentances. 
What is it that is called repentance? What is it that is called remorse? Repentance is to repent past licentiousness. One should repent completely for all one's evil actions from the past, one's transgressions of stupidity, pride, and deception, jealousy, etc., so that they will never arise again. This is called repentance. Remorse is to have remorse for future errors, those from now on. Since you have become enlightened to them now, all one's evil actions from the past, one's transgressions of stupidity, deceitfulness, jealousy, etc., are eradicated forever, never to be committed again. This is called remorse. Therefore, it is called repentance and remorse. Ordinary people are stupid and only know that they should repent for their past licentiousness. They do not know that they should feel remorse for future errors. Because they do not have such remorse, their previous licentiousness is not extinguished, and future errors continue to be generated. With previous licentiousness not extinguished, and future errors continuing to be generated, how can this be called repentance? Good friends, now that we have done the repentances, I will express for you the four great vows. You should all listen closely. The sentient beings of our own minds are limitless, and we vow to save them all. The afflictions of our own minds are limitless, and we vow to eradicate them all. The teachings of our own minds are inexhaustible, and we vow to learn them all. The enlightenment of Buddhahood of our own minds is unsurpassable, and we vow to achieve it. Good friends, why don't we all say simply, Sentient beings are limitless, and we vow to save them all. How should we say it? Certainly, it's not me who's doing the saving. Good friends, the sentient beings of our own minds are the mental states of delusion, confusion, immorality, jealousy, and evil. All these are sentient beings, and we must all undergo automatic salvation of the self-nature. This is called true salvation. What is automatic salvation of the self-nature? It is to use correct views to save the sentient beings of false views, afflictions, and stupidity within our own minds. Having correct views, we may use the wisdom of prajna to destroy the sentient beings of stupidity and delusion, automatically saving each and every one of them. When the false occurs, it is saved by the correct. When delusion occurs, it is saved by enlightenment. When stupidity occurs, it is saved by wisdom. When evil occurs, it is saved by good. Salvation such as this is called true salvation. Further, with the vow, the afflictions are limitless and we vow to eradicate them all, one uses the prajna wisdom of the self-nature to eradicate false and empty thoughts. And with the teachings are inexhaustible, and we vow to learn them all. One should see the nature oneself, and always practice the correct dharma. This is called true learning. With the enlightenment of Buddhahood is unsurpassable, and we vow to attain it, one should constantly be able to practice the true and correct with a humble mind. Transcending delusion and transcending enlightenment, one should always generate prajna. Eradicating the true and eradicating the false, one sees the Buddha nature. This is to accomplish the enlightenment of Buddhahood upon hearing these words. Always mindful of one's cultivation, this is the Dharma of the power of the vows. Good friends, we have now finished the four great vows. Next, I will bestow upon you the formless precepts of the Triple Refuge. Good friends, take refuge in the two-legged honored one of enlightenment. Take refuge in the honored one of the correct transcendence of desire. Take refuge in the honored one within the pure assembly. From today onward, call on realization as your teacher, and do not take refuge any longer in the heretical path of the false demons, but be constantly in realization, yourselves using the three treasures of the self-nature. I exhort you, good friends, to take refuge in the three treasures of the self-nature. 
the word Buddha means enlightenment. Dharma means correct. Sangha means pure. In your own minds, take refuge in enlightenment, so that the deluded and false is not generated. Know the sufficiency of decreased desires and be able to transcend wealth and sensual pleasures. This is called the two-legged honored one, that is, a Buddha in human form. In your own minds, take refuge in the correct, being without false views in every moment of thought. If you are without false thoughts, then there is no self to become proud, lustful, or attached. This is called the honored one who has transcended desire. In your own minds, take refuge in purity. Realize in yourself nature to be completely unattached and undefiled by all the realms of the defiled laborings and the desires. This is called the honored one within the pure assembly. If you cultivate this practice, this is to take refuge oneself. Ordinary people do not understand, and from morning to night accept the three refuges, saying they are taking refuge in the Buddha. Where is the Buddha? If you do not see the Buddha, how will your entreaties for refuge reach him? Such words only create false thoughts. Good friends, you should each examine this for yourselves. Do not go about this incorrectly. The sutras clearly say one should take refuge in the Buddha oneself, but they do not say to take refuge in some other Buddha, that is, a Buddha other than oneself. If you do not take refuge in the self Buddha, you will have no place of refuge at all. Today you are to become enlightened yourselves, and each of you should take refuge in the three treasures of your own minds. Internally regulating the mind nature, externally one pays reverence to other people. This is to take self-refuge. Good friends, now that we have finished taking refuge in the three treasures of our own minds, you should all concentrate your minds, and I will explain for you the Buddha of the self-nature in one essence and three bodies. I will make you see the three bodies and become comprehensively enlightened yourselves to the self-nature. Everyone should say after me, Within my own physical body, I take refuge in the pure Dharmakaya Buddha. In my own physical body, I take refuge in the perfect and complete Sambhogakaya Buddha. In my own physical body, I take refuge in the thousand billion Nirmanakaya Buddhas. Good friends, the physical body is a house, but you can't take refuge in it. The three bodies of the Buddha just mentioned exist within the self-natures, and all the people of this world have them. It is only because one is deluded as to one's own mind that one does not see the inner nature, but seeks externally for the Tathagata in three bodies. Thus, one does not see that the three bodies of the Buddha exist within one's own body. You should all listen to this explanation, and I will make you see the three bodies of the Buddha that exist within the self-natures of your own bodies. These three bodies of the Buddha are generated from the self-natures. They are not attained from any external source. What is the pure Dharmakaya Buddha? The self-natures of the people of this world are fundamentally pure. The myriad dharmas are generated from the self-natures. To think of all the evil things is to generate evil practices. To think of all the good things is to generate good practices. Thus it is that the dharmas occur within the self-natures. Just as heaven is always clear and the sun and moon always bright, it may be that if the sky above is bright and the world below is dark through being blocked by the floating clouds, but all at once a wind will rise up and blow the clouds away, so that above and below are both bright and the myriad forms are all visible. The natures of the people of this world are constantly floating, just like the clouds in the sky. Good friends, Sagacity is like the sun, and wisdom is like the moon. Sagacity and wisdom are always bright, but through being attached externally to sensory realms, the floating clouds of false thoughts block the self-nature, rendering it obscure. 
If you meet a spiritual compatriot and listen to the true and correct dharma, you can eradicate the deluded and false within yourself so that the interior and exterior are penetrated by brilliance and so that the myriad dharmas within the self-nature are all manifest. Those who see the natures are like this. This is called the pure dharmakaya Buddha. Good friends, take refuge in the self-nature within your own minds. This is to take refuge in the true Buddha. To take self-refuge is to eradicate all the unwholesome states of mind, jealousy, perversion, selfishness, delusion, disregard of others, deceitfulness, false views, pride, and the unwholesome practices of all the periods of time that exist in the self-nature. It is constantly to see one's own errors and to refrain from speaking of the good and bad points of others. This is to take self-refuge. One should always be humble and practice reverence for all, so that one sees the nature penetratingly without any hindrance. This is to take self-refuge. What is the perfect and complete Sambhogakaya? Just as a single lamp is able to eradicate a thousand years of darkness, so can a single moment of wisdom extinguish ten thousand years of stupidity. Don't think of your previous errors, and don't think constantly of what may happen later. With every moment of thought, perfect and bright, see your own fundamental nature. Although good and evil are different, their fundamental natures are non-dual. The non-dual nature is called the true nature. To be undefiled by good and evil within the true nature, this is called the perfect and complete Sambhogakaya. If a single thought of evil is activated in the self-nature, it will extinguish ten thousand eons of good causes. If a single thought of good is activated in the self-nature, one will attain the elimination of evils as countless as the sands of the Ganges River. To proceed directly to the unsurpassable Bodhi, seeing naturally with each moment of thought and without losing the fundamental thought, this is called the Sambhogakaya. What are the thousand billion Nirmanakayas? If you do not think of the myriad dharmas, the nature is fundamentally like space or empty. A single moment of thought is called a transformation. To think of evil means transformation into the hells. To think of good things means transformation into the heavens. Poison and injury are transformed into dragons and snakes. Compassion is transformed into bodhisattvas. Wisdom is transformed into the upper realms. Stupidity is transformed into the lower regions. The transformations of the self-nature are extremely numerous. The deluded person cannot understand this and activates evil in every moment of thought, constantly practicing the evil ways. But when he has a single thought of good, wisdom is generated. This is called the Nirmanakaya Buddha of the self-nature. Good friends, the Dharmakaya Buddha is fundamentally imminent within all of us. To see the self-nature yourself in every moment of thought is the Sambhogakaya Buddha. The thoughts that derive from the Sambhogakaya are the Nirmanakaya Buddha. To be enlightened oneself and to cultivate oneself the merits of the self-nature, this is true taking refuge. One's skin and flesh is the physical body, and the physical body is a house, but you can't take refuge in it. Just be enlightened to the three bodies of the self-nature, and this will be to recognize the Buddha of the self-nature. I have a formless verse, which, if you are able to recite it, will cause you, upon hearing these words, to melt away in a single instant the delusions and transgressions of numerous eons. The verse goes, Deluded people cultivate blessings, but do not cultivate the way, saying only that to cultivate blessings is the way. The blessings from charity and offerings may be unlimited, but the three poisons are originally created in the mind. Attempting to cultivate blessings and wanting to extinguish their transgressions, they may attain blessings in later lives, but their transgressions will still exist. They should simply eradicate the conditions of transgression within their minds. 
This is called true repentance within the self-nature. Suddenly enlightened to the true transgression of the Mahayana, eradicating the false and practicing the correct, they are without transgression. Studying the way is to always contemplate the self-nature. This is to be identical with all the Buddhas. Our patriarchs have transmitted only this sudden teaching, and you should all vow to see the nature and be identical to them. If you wish to see the Dharmakaya in the future, transcend the characteristics of the Dharmas and wash them out of your minds. Make an effort to see for yourself. Don't be despondent. Later, in a single moment, you will suddenly cut off your thoughts, thus ending them forever. If you would be enlightened to the Mahayana and see the nature, reverentially hold your palms together in the Anjali Mudra and seek it in utter sincerity. The Master said, Good friends, you should all recite this. If you practice according to it, you will see the nature through hearing these words. Although you may be a thousand li away from me, it will be as if you are constantly by my side. If you do not become enlightened through these words, then why have you gone to the trouble of coming a thousand li to see me? Take care in your going. Of the entire assembly who heard this teaching, not one did not achieve enlightenment and joyfully undertake this practice.